Hi, my name is Albert, and thank you for joining me this week for Digital Discipleship. To my CA family, I sure do miss you, and I'm grateful for you. Welcome to any guests also jumping in with us for the first time. Well, in this season, have you felt times of discouragement, dryness, or weariness? I know I have felt each of those three things in certain moments. And I felt a combination of all three things too at times. But God has led me to some scriptures which has helped pick me up at certain timely moments, which I'd like to share with you. My hope today is that these scriptures will provide for you encouragement and strength as it has for me and continues to do for me when I face challenges, feel discouraged, dry, or weary. The first, first passages I want to share with you come from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We pick it up from verse 7. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. As some of you may know, the author Paul was a force for Jesus. He boldly shared the gospel wherever he went. And yet in this book, he shares vulnerably, and he must have felt discouraged at times when facing all different types of trials, including being in prison, being beaten, or abandoned by other followers. You ever felt weak or hard-pressed in this unprecedented and long season? Ever felt pressed like the walls were literally closing in on you, even as you work from home? The Greek word in the Bible used for hard-pressed is also used to describe grapes being pressed hard upon. This season has felt like that for me at times, and I believe for some of you too. Paul experienced this in a different way, in a different time, and yet encourages us to this very day with those powerful not phrases. Let me read those phrases again. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Paul reminds us that we also have a power not from us, but from God. The words and phrases in Greek were also used to describe a power that is beyond all measure and a power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. If you're a follower of Jesus, we have this beyond all measure power from God through Jesus and the good news of the gospel. May that provide encouragement for you this day. And may you also be encouraged to share with others this power of the gospel as Paul even did when facing hardships. Later on in that same chapter, Paul writes this. We pick it up from verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I've been encouraged by those verses as Paul points out that the end of our story as Christ followers is known, and hint, it's a great one. Some of you may have heard about or watched The Last Dance, the recent ESPN documentary on Michael Jordan and the powerhouse team of the Chicago Bulls way back for you youngsters out there in the 1990s. It's a behind-the-scenes look at the last year Michael Jordan played with the Bulls and their championship team during the final run together as a unit. However, while that was his last dance with the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan actually came back again from retirement and played three years later for the Washington Wizards. Yes, that did happen. That wasn't a dream or nightmare. That was truly his last dance. And while he was by no means a bad basketball player, and he could still have some great games with Washington, he was clearly not the peak of his powers as he once was with the Bulls. It was like you could see his internal drive and competitiveness still running at a super high level and flashes of greatness at times. His body wasn't able to consistently follow through though at that age. I can sympathize. He retired after just two seasons with the Wizards. 
our last dance as followers of Jesus will not be the same as with Michael Jordan's basketball career in those last years with Washington. While our bodies will wither, we will certainly pass. We will be raised up with Jesus and will receive an eternal glory that Paul describes. The Greek word actually used for glory can be defined as a splendor or a most glorious condition or most exalted state. You see that our end of our journey and our last dance will not be one that ends with our bodies being broken, but instead our true ending will be a, a beginning of being restored and receiving an, an eternal glory. That should give you and I hope and strength for today as we know where we are going, how we should live, and press on forward with the good news of Jesus. When my dad passed away a few years ago from cancer, I literally saw him wasting away physically, though his mind was still sharp. He dramatically lost weight and then passed away soon after he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. While it certainly was a difficult season for me and my family, I knew I would see him again internally and he would be in his most glorious condition and state as he was a Christ follower. That encourages me, me to this day, and I know that I, where I will be when my end comes. My last dance will be with eternal glory in Christ Jesus. Thank goodness for that, as I know I am already past my prime physically. In this season, I've been also reading a psalm a day, and I found it incredibly helpful as it's an honest look at a relationship, our relationship with God, and I feel I can turn to him when feeling dry through the Psalms. Let me read from Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your great power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name, I will lift up my hands. And this is a good verse for foodies, and I'm a, certainly a foodie. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With seeing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night, because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. David, who wrote this psalm, he, he was literally in the desert when he wrote this. This was probably also written while David was fleeing from Absalom, his own son, who was trying to kill him, even though David was king. You see, he was hard-pressed by those who sought his life. Again, even his own son, whom he loved. Though he was in a des desert, his soul became watered by God. He worshipped and sang in the desert, even in the midst of being chased and on the run. And he found God's right hand upholding him. I pray God's right hand to uphold you today and going forward in this season. I love verse 3. Because your love is better than life. Charles Spurgeon wrote, Life is dear. But God's love is dear. And his love is available to us. It's eternal and it's close at hand. May that be a source of encouragement if you're feeling dry or if and when you are in a desert of your life. The last verses I want to share with you are from Isaiah. Isaiah wrote during a stormy period and during the decline of Israel. He speaks and wards on God's judgment and yet also shares of God's restoration and comfort. I read from Isaiah 40, starting at 28. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. Uh, but for those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. 
They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I hope and pray that you would be able to soar on wings like eagles, even in difficult seasons like this. Pray that for you, your family, your loved ones, and for our entire church family. The word renew used in verse 31 can also be described as sprouting again like grass growing. And my hope is that your strength will sprout again over and over and daily as you look to God's word to renew your strength. The word hope there can also be used to mean to wait and eagerly look for, to be expectant. So as you wait upon the Lord, may you eagerly expect God to provide you encouragement this day. God bless you and keep you. And I hope these scriptures have given you strength.